We're back looking at Elijah again, 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings 19 and verse 1, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. So, I would say Ahab left out the part about how Elijah's God sent fire down from heaven. But Baal didn't show up for those 400 and something false prophets. I wonder if Ahab left out all the real news and gave Jezebel all the fake news. It's true that Elijah slew the prophets of Baal, but it's also true that those prophets had the wrong God. In 1 Kings 19.2, it says, Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, Let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So uh, Jezebel sends a messenger to Elijah, saying, Let the gods do to me, and more also. If I make not thy life as the life of one of them, as one of those false prophets of Baal. He, she's saying that she's going to have Elijah dead soon, just like those prophets of Baal that he killed. And that reminds me of what Paul said, because Jezebel sends a messenger, so that would have to be a messenger from Satan. And uh, Paul had a messenger sent to him, a messenger of Satan to buffet him in Second Corinthians twelve seven. He says, Unless I should be exalted above measures through the abundance of the revelations there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. I'm thinking that maybe the events that are about to take place on the story of Elijah is a messenger of Satan to keep Elijah humble, what Elijah is about to go through. I mean, he just had an insane victory against those 400-something prophets of Baal. He got fire to come down from heaven. They couldn't get Baal to to do anything and a man can get puffed up in that kind of victory so maybe god al just allows jezebel to send this messenger of satan to buffet elijah and you'll notice that what jezebel says doesn't even come to pass she said let the gods do to me and more also she's the one who ends up dead not elijah first kings 19 3 when he saw that when elijah saw the, uh, with the messenger and all that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. When Elijah saw that Jezebel had a hit out on him, he went for his life, and he leaves his servant behind. Now, he leaves his servant behind. This shows that Elijah is still a man of character. Even though this is his servant, he doesn't want him to have to go through what he's about to go through. He leaves him behind. Pretty much any time that I've heard this story about Elijah... Many men believe that he's scared. I, I, I really don't believe he's scared. And it definitely can look that way, though. I just have a hard time believing that all of a sudden that this man is afraid. He had just let Ahab and about 450 prophets of Baal have it in the last chapter, in chapter 18. He just slew 450 prophets of Baal. And the fact that he went for his life doesn't prove that he is scared either, I, I don't believe. I, uh, Jesus had to hide for his life at times simply because it just wasn't his hour yet. For example, in John eight fifty nine, then they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So Jesus, you see, he wasn't afraid of those stones. He took the cross willingly later on, remember? So I don't believe Elijah was afraid either just because he went for his life. I think he was frustrated and thought he was actually more important than he actually was. That's another reason I believe the Lord allowed the messenger from Jezebel, which to me pictures a messenger of Satan, the same kind that the Apostle Paul had. But Elijah went for his life. I believe because he was frustrated that the people didn't turn to God after the miracle that had just taken place in chapter 19 or chapter 18. And he gets to the point where he is defeated and he even requests to die. In 1 Kings 19.4, he sa it says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And later on the Lord asked him, What doest thou here, Elijah? In verse 14, 
It says, And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So it doesn't seem that he ran because he was afraid of Jezebel. It seems he was so jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the people had forsaken the Lord. And there is something in Elijah that thought he was the only one left that was right with God. He said, I, even I only am left. But that wasn't true. He wasn't the only one left right with God. And I don't believe he was afraid of death because he himself requested himself that he might die. I just don't think he wanted to give Jezebel and Ahab the satisfaction of killing him. Kind of like Zimri didn't want to give Omri the satisfaction of killing him, so he went ahead and committed suicide back in 1 Kings 16, 18. 1 Kings 19, 4, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came out and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. Now can you imagine how tired Elijah would have been, constantly traveling on foot, and he requested for himself that he might die, similar to Jonah, how he did in Jonah 4, 8, when he wished in himself to die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. Elijah was like this. He was frustrated and said, I am not better than my father's. This is another reason why I believe Elijah was frustrated with the results of his last sermon, with the re results of his last miracle. I think a lot of times people get frustrated with the results. But you have to remember that nothing for the Lord is done in vain, even if there was not good results. First Kings 19.5, And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Elijah was touched by an angel before that wicked TV show even came out on TV. Elijah was tired and hungry, and the Lord keeps making sure that he gets food. And I don't know if he got an angel food cake or what he got here. I don't know if he got a Twinkie or a little Debbie or something here, but he went in the strength of that of that meat for 40 days, 40 days and 40 nights. In First Kings 19, 6, it says, And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruse of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid, laid him down again. So Elijah was tired. He was hungry. And God made us to where we need food and sleep. And sometimes I'm so busy that I go to bed way too late. I get up at 4 a.m., and if I'm awake at 11 at night, then I'm sleepy the next day. If I can get to sleep by 10, I'm, I'm okay the next day. But sometimes you think you're getting more done by staying up late. And then the quality of your work is not as good the next day. And the devil also likes to attack you when you're weak. So God made us where we need sleep. He made us that way. 1 Kings 19, 7 and 8. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and says, Arise and eat, and because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the might of God. So this puts Elijah in the record books with Jesus Christ and Moses. This puts him in Guinness's World Records and Ripley's if they had it back then. Both of them also went forty days and forty nights fasting. Both of them also went forty days and forty nights fasting. And First Kings nineteen nine says, And he came thither into a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Here is the Lord asking a question for Elijah's sake and not for his own. When the Lord asks a question, he already knows the answer. This is why he asked Adam, Where art thou? Back in the garden. He already knows the answer, but he he's just asking you for your sake. In 1 Kings 19.10, And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, and throw down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Elijah is discouraged and frustrated. But being jealous for the Lord is a great quality. We ought to get jealous for the Lord. When I see people worshiping their false idols of today, I should be jealous for the Lord's sake. When I see Hollywood making fun of Jesus, I ought to be angry for the Lord's sake. Elijah was like that. 1 Kings 19.11, And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind went through the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Now you see, this is the power of God here. Nahum 1.3 says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind, and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. 
the Lord's in control of all that stuff, and he makes it to pass by right next to Elijah. It doesn't say anything about Elijah being afraid. Now, once again, I don't think Elijah is a, a very scared type of man. And then 1 Kings nineteen twelve, And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. This is God showing that he doesn't always talk through enormous power, but sometimes through a still, small voice. The Lord doesn't need, even need a huge natural disaster to wipe out the population. He could start with a little microscopic bug and put it in one person, and then it spreads and kills everybody like a silent killer. 1 Kings nineteen thirteen and 14. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering end of the, of the cave. And I can just imagine that Elijah going out in, at the front of that cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Today they've thrown out his book. They don't worship God. They, they offer their own weird type of sacrifices today to their self. And they, they hate his preachers, just like they did back then. And Elijah sees that and how wicked the world is and says, I, even I only am left. And that is a bad shape to get in, to think you're the last one left. Especially since the Lord says he has 7,000 other men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. And I know of men right now who think they're the last one left. They are so down on all Christians. They're so down on all the preachers. They think they're the last one left, and they just become a lone wolf, and they just uh, they just stay at home all the time, and they, they're just down on everybody because they think they're the last real one left. In 1 Kings nineteen fifteen and 16, And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi, Shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So the Lord wants him back out there dealing with people. He's got him he, he gives him something to go to do, and it has to go out there and dealing with people, not by himself. As much as we have the temptation of isolation, we have to get out there and deal with others. And Elijah needed to get out there and raise up the next Elijah which would be Elisha. And in 1 Kings nineteen seventeen and 18, And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet have I left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed down unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So Elijah thought he was in this thing alone, but there were actually 7,000 other men out there and I don't know if he just didn't know about them or if he thought they were compromisers or and wasn't counting on men with him or what, but he wasn't the last one left. And notice it says in that verse, And every mouth which hath not kissed him, talking about Baal. You see, the idol worship is connected with... The idol worship is connected with men kissing something. Like in Hosea 13, 2, it says, Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. And in 1 Kings 19, 19, it says, So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plying with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by and cast his mantle upon him. So it also seems like Elijah, he's still mad. Elijah just walks by frustrated and throws his mantle on him. And in 1 Kings 19, 20, he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again. For what have I done to thee? You know, Elijah, he's just basically saying, what do I care? I don't want to do this anyways. You go back, you do what you what you want to do. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of oxen and gave them to the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So now we're going to get into Elijah and Elisha. Elisha is going to take Elijah's place after he's called up into heaven and he's actually going to do even more miracles than Elijah did. But this has just been a quick little study on 1 Kings chapter 19 about Elijah and his discouragement. Uh, he let Jezebel discourage him. He let that messenger of Satan discourage him.